All right, it's um, October 26th or 27th, I'm not sure. Um, it's a Saturday, it's about 11 a.m. Um, going out to hit uh, a lot of doors today by myself. Um, uh, again, you know, it's the weekends, people are home, they're in and out of their houses during the day. Um, a great time to knock on a Saturday is actually in the mornings between 9 and 12. Um, people are getting up. Getting ready for uh, the day, you know, to go shopping or you know, clean up or do whatever it is. But um, again, outdoor knocking. Um, um, uh, I got a couple of uh, really good leads again, driving the other day with one of my students. Um, you know, again, I pick up driving for dollars. Okay, so let's talk about driving for dollars. Um, you're going out and essentially just picking up uh, vacant homes. Um, so a vacant home is a home that, no, that nobody lives in, obviously, right? That's the definition. Um, a great source or uh, wealth of information are the neighbors. The neighbors know everything. Um, or they have a speculation on everything, you know what I mean? So. Um, a lot of people don't know this, uh, you know, if you're out knocking on doors for vacant properties or even like pre foreclosures, neighbors are a wealth of information. Like you want to go knock on their door and just ask them, do you know anything about that house? Do you know, um, you know, what's going on? It's a vacant home. I buy and sell properties, pay cash for them, kind of give them a thing. You'll get a lot of people who really want to talk to you, <laughs> um, especially when you're not like in their business. So if you're knocking on their door and you're talking about the neighbor, um, you know, they become very like friendly and um, they love to bullshit sometimes. Sometimes too much. Sometimes it's like so much. Um, so much uh, information and they get to talking about themselves. And, you know, again, you want to kind of control the situation. Um, you know, but again, when you first start out, just go into, you know, look, I'm, I'm trying to buy this house. See their response. Sometimes it's just like, you know, no, I don't know anything. I don't really talk to those people. Um, so on and so forth so uh you know but again you know i've got phone numbers from people um i've got uh information that uh you know you never know it's true until you actually check it out when you do your due diligence or when you're checking out your the information that you actually get on the home um i went and knocked on the neighbor's door on in a home in south phoenix um they said the lady was either probably dead or in a hospice and it was true uh she died in 2016 um, and um, hunting down the uh, neighbors actually today, or I'm sorry, the family members today, um, potential family members. So I want to see what's going on. Um, and uh, some of them might live in Texas, some of them might, might, like, might live here. But again, um, finding either phone numbers or um, places that they might live, uh, you know, something you can kind of do a little bit of work in the morning and then go out and find a find out if there's any any sort of, any sort of information um, so again uh, it's information gathering um, the more that you uh, know about a, a certain property helps you actually control your emotion so again um, people are emotional uh, when somebody in the family dies um, you know, it's an emotional situation and a lot of the times they don't want to deal with the property. They want you to deal with it. You know, it's a, it's a tragic uh, something or other. I mean, this lady was really old. It was kind of just her time, it seems like. Um, so I'm going to go figure out if, you know, these people are really, um, uh, you know, interested in getting rid of the property. It's a solid, it's a really big property actually in South Phoenix. And uh, again, a lot of people in South Phoenix don't like um, South Phoenix, but it's a big property, and I know a lot of guys that um, want properties in South Phoenix. Some people tell me like I don't want anything in South Phoenix. It doesn't make sense. I, um, you know, drove, did some door knocking, and was driving for dollars down there two days ago. Um, there used to be a golf course when I was a kid there, and they're now um, they've torn down that golf course, ripped it all up, and are building a new, um, building a new. Uh, housing development there so again um you know like i said in a podcast before there's a starbucks down there there's a community college down there there's um uh you know it's 
right next to Tempe, and Tempe is a highly um, desired area to live in because of the the downtown nightlife and then the college, Arizona State University. So um, people love Tempe. Um, there's a great mall there. Uh, there's a lot of cool like bars and restaurants and things like that. You know, so again, a lot of apartment complexes are there uh, for the kids or people that just you know work down there. Tempe's definitely a cool place. There's Tempe Town Lake. When I was a kid, it was just like a, a, a wash. Um, it wasn't even, you know what I mean? And the, the city put in um, a little man-made river there. And, um, God damn this thing. Um, the, uh, the river actually brought in a lot of real estate. So they started building like huge um, apartment complexes uh, or condominiums really. Um, and it's like, it's amazing like everybody wants to live down there you know there's a lot of the that new style apartment living where you have all the amenities in there you have a gym a day spa um you know like you could have a house cleaner come clean your house or your condo um and then there's commercial offices inside um really beautiful uh you know big humongous uh apartment living right on the the tempe town lake i guess you would call it um it's not a lake it's more like a river but um you know and you have arizona state university that's where the uh, sun devils play um and then you have mill avenue which is a lot of bars and restaurants and, and, and places to shop you know cool, cool spots um, but that's right next to south phoenix and again driving for dollars um i was able to drive by this property and find out information that was actually true so again, um, if you go knock on somebody's door and you're looking at a vacant property, knock on the neighbor's door um, and, and figure out like, you know, you might get a phone number that, you know, you don't have to really do any research on. They'll be like, yeah, this is Betty's phone number or this is Betty's son's phone number. Um, you know, give him a call. I'm not sure if he's going to sell or not, but he's a really nice guy and they'll tell you certain things. They'll tell you the kind of moods they are, or, like the kind of people they are. Um, uh, and again, the, the more information, not just the technical information, but the information about the personality of the person that you're dealing with. So if you get somebody nice, you know, you know what you're dealing with. Or if you get somebody older, you know what you're dealing with. If you get somebody younger, um, if you know what kind of job they have, um, you know, if you've, if you've been a social person or um, if you've been in sales, um, you know different personality types. You have introverted people, you have people that are really guarded, you have people that are really open, people that are really friendly, the people that are really funny. Um, you know, there's all different kinds of people out there and, um, you know, again, you just have to kind of shift your, uh, your, the way that you speak with them, um, in order to kind of build rapport. So again, information just isn't technical information. You know what I mean? It, 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 again, like you can look somebody's astrological sign up and find out what kind of sign they are or, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like find the day that they're born and, and you know, I do shit like that, like stupid shit like that. Look up on Facebook, social media websites and just take a look like their wife and their family. Like I'm going to this guy's house right now. Um, yeah, I looked him up on Facebook. I messaged him on Facebook. He's got a vacant property uh, in the north area of Phoenix and it's just uh, vacant sitting there. Really nice house. He bought it. 2012 is 2017 and it's you know he lives at a different address now so I'm gonna go look at the property first and then I'm actually gonna go look uh, go knock on the door that I see uh, you know my my CRM so I'm gonna see if he actually lives there and again he's got a wife and baby he looks like a younger guy um, you know all-american dude <laughs> so he's maybe he might be a nice guy maybe not um, but he looks pretty pretty nice so again you never know what kind of attitude or what kind of situation that they're in. Um, it's a vacant property that's not in a pre-foreclosure status, but um, it's just sitting there. And um, we're gonna go find out what's up. Um, but um, I'm also gonna go knock on the neighbor's door. So what my uh, bird dog didn't do, um, again, cause uh, you know, it's not really that season, is uh, you know, he didn't knock on the neighbor's door, so there was no information there on, in my system about it. So again, um, you know, knocking on the neighbor's doors is a, is a really good uh, idea it's a really good something that you, you should do when you're knocking on properties um, and trying to find uh, you know deals to, to sell you know buy and sell under contract um, wholesale so wholesaling single-family homes uh, again I always stress that the, uh, the door knock is probably the best fastest way to get deals when you're first starting out um, you know, like I say in all my 
my podcast. You can send yellow letters. You can hang bandit signs. You can do all these type of things. But those should be forms of marketing that you do when you're more seasoned and you have money and you actually know how to um, talk to people. Um, I went out with my guy the other night uh, and we got a deal. Uh, I was talking about, I think, in my last podcast. Uh, you know, he, he's just kind of new at it. And he's really like a go-getter type person. Um, but this is probably his third job. He worked some sort of job when he was younger, and then he um, he uh, worked at a, a Chinese food restaurant chain for like the majority of his life. Ever since he was like 22 years old or something like that, or maybe you know he started out as a retail um, a retail cash register person, and then he moved all the way up to like managing seven or nine different um, Chinese food restaurants. And um, now it's the third time. So he's he, he understands sales, uh, he understands systems, but again, he's not as uh, assertive uh, as he could be. But again, this is a new thing. It's not that he's not smart or doesn't have common sense or he's not good or, again, he's, put, he's doing all of the proper things that you should be doing when you first start out, which is just putting in the work. Um, but we went over to a deal and I wanted to him for him to meet on the property, but um, this guy was kind of more of a, taller guy he was really a uh, tough guy kind of had that attitude and again I had to really get in there and be assertive about him and kind of give him you know the ultimatum of like you know you're going to lose your home we would like to buy your home but I'm not going to bullshit you and I'm, I'm not going to um, uh, you know I'm not going to fuck around and please don't uh, disrespect my time I, I kind of expressed that I really didn't say that exactly but like the way that I got my point across he actually had more respect for that. So I actually had one person on my team call him, and then I had my other student uh, who's on my team go and deal with him a couple different times, um, and then he had you know, not shown up to an appointment or he flaked him out or whatever. Um, and then we actually went to his house the other night on Wednesday night, and he's like, wasn't there. We went there on Thursday night. Um, you know, he told us to come back on Thursday night, so we came back on Thursday night. He still wasn't there, but his uh, kids answered the door and said that he's on his way. So, um, and we literally waited like three minutes and he pulled up, uh, you know, in his nice beamer. He's got about a, maybe a $300,000 house and he's he's in the house and uh, he's got two cars. It's just him and his two boys. So I don't know what he has two cars for, but again, um, you know, he was a real, one of those people that doesn't want to feel like they're ever weak. You know what I mean? And and again, like if, if they know that you're weak, um, and again, I'm not saying my student is weak at all. What I'm just saying is, is that they, he just doesn't know what to say or do right now. Um, and uh, that's why I recommend either door knocking or cold calling um, when you're first starting out uh, wholesaling single family homes because uh, you don't really know what to say or do. Uh, and again, being sort of and kind of giving people the ultimatum of, uh, you know, you're, you're either going to lose your home or... Um, you know, I'm interested in buying the home, but you know, I'm looking for people that are serious. Um, and, but being doing that in a nice way, in an assertive, nice way, to where they can't really like get upset. You know what I mean? But they can think about it. You know, if you act like you don't care in a nice manner, whether you get it or not, um, you can go uh, and do another deal. And again, that's that's the whole point of of doing what you're doing uh, when you're single, when you're doing single family homes want to um, have a pipeline full of deals Um, and again learning how to do um, or to negotiate um, you need to train your mind to think a certain way um, or and and to react to situations in a certain manner to so they let you let you know that you're serious so again I have two people on my team that are you know they're they're not just seasoned yet they're not they're not they haven't done this enough to know what to do and what to say and again we become more thick-skinned you become more um, assertive uh, and you know you let people know that you don't want your time disrespected you kind of express that um, and and people really react to that Um, you know and some people are just hard-headed some people are they just once you let them know you know and you get a lot of people especially when the pre foreclosures come around that they're it's a lot of bullshit out there, you know, people are like one and done, or, 
they tell them, hey, trust me, and do all that. I don't go into like, hey, you know what, you can trust me. I just tell them, you know, let me let me do my job. You know, if you're serious about this, if you're not, then you know, there's no reason for us to speak anymore. Um, and, and I don't want to waste your time. You know, like, again, when you do that and you let them know, you know, don't please don't waste my time. This guy was that kind of guy. Like, you know, like he just wanted some respect. And um, again, when you, you give respect, you should um, uh, ask for, uh, you know, respect back. Uh, and that's what levels the, the playing field and gets you to, uh, um, you know, be able to sign a deal. So again, a lot of people probably have worked on this deal. Um, and we knew that because he was saying certain things. But, um, you know, one guy had offered him a certain amount of money, which was close to the offer that he wanted. Um, but the guy didn't follow up. Or didn't follow up enough because you know we got the deal uh, and again you know you really have to kind of uh, get out there and just start doing it on your own and then having somebody kind of back you up on it there's a million different programs out there right now where you can pay money um, and they have uh, some sort of a closer on their team they just need you to go out and find them a deal so if you're working that again um, and you're trying to do it through through mailers you know letter, yellow letters or bandit signs and trying to market and stuff you know you're not really going to get the results that you want unless you proactively go out and do something so go out and, and knock on doors and that's really what's going to get you closer because once you actually get something um, and you have somebody come in and close it for you you're absolutely watching and seeing what they're doing so my new student again like this is going to be his first deal um, he's been at it a week and a half um, you know again there's a lot of people out there that pay a lot of money for this type of education and they don't um, they don't actually get anything in the first year or they've been doing it a couple years and they have they're, they're just frustrated um, which sucks you know because you paid you know, ex, you know thousands of dollars usually you know there's packages out there for six thousand dollars all the way up to 28 grand no I mean I've seen other packages out for like fifty thousand dollars that get you into commercial deals or whatever but you know you can spend a lot of money in education just like you do uh, in college you spend a lot of money you take out a lot of uh, dollars just to um, uh, learn how to do something so again you know but you know what school doesn't teach you is how to be proactive like when you're when you're in college like you're in college for four years but are you actually doing any of the work no you're studying about it uh, this is the same thing like you know you can study about it all you want but until you actually get out and do it that's why I try to keep it real basic um, again it's just knocking on the door asking them if they want to sell their home um, if they're in a pre-foreclosure status, you know, you want to kind of let them know, well, you know, your pre-foreclosure is coming up. So do you mind if I get your phone number? I'm not going to, you know, market to you, bother you, yada, yada, yada. But, um, you know, if I can help you out, you know, would that be okay? And again, being nice to somebody who's really either angry, upset, depressed, or whatever um, is, you know, is, is bulletproof. You can't really get, um, you can't really get, uh, you know that far with being having an attitude or being a dick or being cocky or anything like that you know being nice will get you a lot farther so um you know just be like honey <laughs> be sweet uh be nice you know no matter what whoever it is even if they're being total uh assholes to you uh some people are stubborn and they're just going to lose all their equity in their home they it's like they'd rather lose that than uh you know feel weak or uh, feel like they're getting screwed but again we're not out to screw people we're out to solve problems um, and again like I I'm always trying to solve the problems as opposed to um, trying to you know make a sell you know and again you can beg for sales but you know the wolves smell blood the sharks smell blood you know and don't want to beg for sales you just want to act like you don't really don't care even if you're struggling to get money if you do it properly like people will understand that um, and uh, you know if you consistently work a pipeline of deals you don't have to worry about anything so again you always get excited when you get your first deal or when you're getting deals and you're waiting on you know that big twenty thousand dollar or maybe ten thousand dollar paycheck and uh, you know and then something at the closing table happens and you don't get the money and then you can fall deep down into a, a, a type of depression or something like that so it's important that you, you continually get information continually get deals 
Um, get as much information as you can, um, but work a number of leads per day, uh, and then go out there, especially on the weekends, which is a great time. Like I said, Sunday night is the best time between four and eight. Um, everybody's home, and uh, you know most people don't do that. Um, they won't work four to eight on on a Sunday night, uh, or they don't they don't want to wake up in the morning on a Saturday, and and start to work. They just want to do what they want to do and or what they're told to do uh, in these educational systems which you know none of them really emphasize on going out and directly speaking with people um, my the biggest emphasis for me um, if I'm gonna teach you how to do this would be to go out and directly speak with them um, and again that's getting your car driving around and, and, and talking with them and you never know what you're gonna get into when you, when you just start talking to somebody or you talk to a neighbor, you're gonna find out information. Um, neighbors love to talk. Um, they love to talk about other people. You know, it's gossip or whatever. Um, and they'll give up the information even if they don't know you. Um, and if you can build enough rapport with, with people that are actually losing their homes, you know, again, they like you um, and they wanna go with you for whatever reason. Uh, and you wanna, you know, again, take care of them you know solve their problem communicate through the process with them which is very important um, again a lot of investors don't do that they just sign somebody up and then you know like a month later you hear from them and there, there's no um, you know there's no real um, communication so again like you can be the nicest most charismatic person and lock somebody up but if you don't act like they're being taken care of they're not gonna feel like you're taking care of them so you, you want to just again consistently follow up and even when I'm um, or especially when um, I'm dealing with uh, somebody that I haven't locked up yet and I'm working on and they've said yes or whatever they, they've agreed to an appointment you know I'm consistently following up and making sure but I'm also consistently following up even after I sign the contract um, and uh, or if I'm working with my students I have them do that because that's how they actually learn you know what I mean they learn the best when you're when you're interacting when you're actually doing so um, you learn more when you do uh, not when you uh, you know just sit there and listen to audios or watch podcasts or read information like you want the information um, from the actual properties that you're looking at and then you want to go out and you want to physically um, interact with the people um, and again that's how you get the deals the results that you want the fastest and the uh <laughs> dude this fucking thing sucks okay but um again i'm not gonna make it too long here it's just been about 20 minutes but um again get out there knock on doors when you're when you're when you're going and you're driving for dollars which means that you're finding vacants or you're driving and you're talking to um you know sellers you want to you want to get out there and you want to talk to them so make sure that you're speaking with people uh, that you're being nice you're being assertive uh, and then you're talking to the neighbors if somebody isn't home um, people are always home so you can work from 9 in the morning till 9 at night some people have lost their job you can go knock on the door then um, they don't expect people to come usually in the middle of the day um, so you know again if you just keep knocking something will, will eventually happen for you so um, again you know I have a student right now he's been at it for a week and a half two weeks He's already got something because he's put in the effort. Um, and again, I back him up on that. So again, if it makes sense to me, because um, you know, obviously I'm teaching him, but um, it's also a deal that I'm going to make money off of. Um, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm definitely going to back him up. So if you can bring that's value again. Um, so if you have any sort of students or you're working with people, you're trying to teach somebody, you know, you want to back them up. If you're just starting out, you want to get out there and knock doors and bring a phone number to somebody you know what i'm saying if you don't know what to say and you have somebody mentoring you um you know if there's something in it for them they're going to put in the time and effort to help you so uh you know when i first started out i paid a lot of money for education then i just went out um and i didn't really do any listen to the any, any of the education i understood the, the certain concept of it but um i really didn't know what to do or say and i had been a door knocker for years um so again it really um when i started getting out in there and started knocking on doors um, it started working for me um, again I you know 
didn't make a lot of money in the beginning when I was learning from different people. They were only paying me a very small amount of money, but who cares? Like now I know exactly what to do and I know how to make the big bucks and it was worth it um, to go through all that kind of like shit, man. Like I'm seeing somebody make 35 grand when I just made 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. But um, again, you know, there's always opportunity out there whether it's a good recession or a bad recession as an investor so it doesn't matter um you know when you're when you're when you're wholesaling you don't really have any stake in the game you're not putting any money into renovations or anything you don't have any money in the game it teaches you how to make money without money and that's what you want to do you want to first learn how to make money without money so then when you have money you know what to do with it so this is nate ness and it's saturday the end of the month starting to get cool in phoenix and i'm out knocking on doors and i'll be out of it all day have a great day